Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay, all right, just making sure. The Facebook Live is going up as well, and... Uh, If we put that, if we put Facebook Live on, it might mess with his other. No, I think um, it looks like it's on. We have some people that will join us here on Zoom, and others will join us on Facebook Live. But to me, it doesn't matter. Uh -oh. Yeah. Okay. So Facebook Live is up. All right. Mother Hutz is on Facebook Live. All right. So we're good. Uh, There's my beautiful bride. Everyone. I'm actually going to share the Word of Life, um, I mean, the Facebook Live as well. Uh, let me make sure I'm there. Good evening, Evangelist Sandy. Hi. How are you? How are you? I'm good. good. How are you? I'm Bobby. <laughs> Hi, Pastor. <laughs> she hasn't beat him up yet, so he's okay. Yeah. <laughs> CJ, CJ said hi, everyone. Hey, hi, big CJ. CJ. Hi, well, you have to stick your face around here if you're going to do that. Well, I was going to say, let me sit down for a second so I can lean over. Sorry. I might look a little scruffy, but <laughs> hi, everybody. <laughs> hey, it's good to see you. It's good to see you, too. Sometimes that's the only way to get it in church. <laughs> hey, thank God for virtual uh, things. And now we got them in here. That's all that matters. Um, yeah. All right, well, let's get back to it. Don't want to interrupt anymore. Bye, everybody. Have a good yeah. night. Bye. <laughs> uh, people are coming in now. We have a few on Facebook Live. Facebook Live, good to see you all. Uh, Zoom, good to see you all. Um, we are headed into a direction um, right now where uh, we're kind of calling this next, I'd say, six or seven weeks um, safe. We're at home uh, Wednesday nights. All right. Um, we're going to. Uh, we had a Zoom uh, conference last night with our mayor and our assistant city manager, and we discussed certain things that we're doing in Desert Hot Springs um, to uh, help mitigate the spread of, of COVID. Um, and it's, it's something that we have to be very mindful of. Um, I think people are taking it a little bit less seriously now because uh, the death rate is going down. Um, but the death rate can go down all it wants to. Uh, I don't think any of us want the virus at all. And um, so that being said, we're going to do all we can to uh, keep down exposures of crowds and all that kind of stuff. So um, Sunday morning, uh, well, well, let me pray and then we'll get into that. Father, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for bringing us um, here and we thank you for virtual platforms where we can still meet and we can still discuss the word. And God, we just thank you for all those that are joining and all those that will be joining later and be watching later. We pray that we're able to edify and, and help grow the body um, any way that we can. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Minister Suzanne, Sister mm -hmm. Denise, Brother Reggie, Mother Joanne, Sister Crystal, uh, Brother John Anderson, Sister Zanisha, I see you. God bless you guys. Um, we're admitting people in as well. Um, and I, if you happen to uh, come in on Zoom, um, if it takes me a minute to let you in the room, just be bear with me. Um, I'm learning this as we go along too. And um, Evangelist Sandy's smiling, but she'll be learning it as well. <laughs> and, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll all be learning this together, all right? Um, listen, okay, so we understand the governor's order. Um, we understand what he put forth. And um, again, just like three months ago, I do not believe that this is a time where, um, where, we, can, where we can say this is necessarily persecution. Um, it would be persecution to me if other entities were allowed to operate and the church wasn't. But um, if you look around, uh, movie theaters and indoor um, shopping centers and all those kind of things, those are actually asked to stop, uh, you know, uh, functioning as well. Um, we haven't been asked not to worship. We haven't been asked not to preach the name of Jesus. We have not been asked not to pray in the name of Jesus. 
We've been asked <laughs> what we can to help mitigate uh, the spread of this virus, okay? Um, so people are asking how long it will be, no one knows. Uh, the governor's initial um, conversation was three weeks, but we understand what three weeks look like three months ago. So it could be two, three months, we just don't know. I did see something encouraging today. Um, it was encouraging and frustrating at the same time. The, the director of the CDC said that if we uh, can commit to wearing masks for three weeks, that he believes the virus will be eradicated within the next month. That's very encouraging. But then it's frustrating at the same time because I know that everyone's not gonna wear a mask because some people think that uh, we're being told what to do and all that kind of stuff. So we're just gonna do the best that we can, all right? So um, starting on this Sunday, we'll go back to our production team. Um, those people that are there to help ensure the service gets streamed properly. Um, I will say this publicly, uh, we're encouraging everyone to stay home, okay? Um, we're not gonna lock the doors. And I say that because um, word of life, those are the under the sound of my voice, you know what, what encouraging stay home means. But locking the doors is dangerous to me spiritually because you never know, God may send someone to the church on Sunday morning just to be in his presence or be in the house or whatever. All right, so we're not gonna lock the doors. All right, should people, should someone show up, we're gonna make sure they social distance but we're gonna go back to that production team, uh, my worship team, musicians, uh, myself, pastor, and a couple of men, um, uh, security under the direction of the big boss man who will be home overseeing everything, all right? So, um, and that'll just be until God says different, all right? Brother James and Mother Mary and Elder Franklin, uh, good to see you all. Sister Jennifer and Sister Faye, good to see you. Um, so hopefully, um, Hopefully, if if, uh, if we continue to do what God wants us to do in this season, um, we'll start to see fruit rather quickly. All right. Um, this does not mean that we get to lax and no, we still need to stay connected. Um, and I'll say this. We were told by some people that they felt like they weren't connected to the church uh, the last time we went virtual for three months. And I found that to be extremely disheartening because we did everything that we could to stay connected outside of pick up the phone and call every person on our membership roster and say hello every week. That's virtually impossible to do because we both have full-time jobs and we have a family and we have lives and all of our leaders are going through this pandemic together. None of us have ever been here before. And so what we did was we tried to do Zoom calls and Facebook lives to connect us all together. And, you know, people just didn't get on. So for those that are listening now, this next month, um, That'll be ten dollars uh, for those that are listening now. For this, <laughs> <laughs> for, for this next month at least, while we're doing things virtually, we're doing all we can to stay connected with you. All right, we're gonna go back. Uh, we're gonna do our zooms, uh, our, our big Bible studies via Zoom, sharing on Facebook Live, so we can see each other. We have our app. Um, if you don't have the app, please go to the Apple or the Android Marketplace and get it. You can stay connected with us there. And then, um, you know, obviously virtual services and all that kind of stuff. All right, so um, let's get right into this. Uh, if there was ever a time for us to show the fruit of the spirit is developed in our lives, it's now. Um, the world is a crazy place, um, crazier than I've ever seen it. In my soon to be 42 years on earth, um, never been through a pandemic, never seen so much panic and anxiety um, just worldwide. And we keep saying that the world needs the church and the world is looking for the church and the world is leaning on the church. However, I'm concerned that the church isn't spiritually mature enough to be able to help shoulder this burden and, and, the, and the point the world to the cross. Um, one thing about us is we can't be so self-absorbed in this time that we forget our assignments. We forget what we are called to do. And the Great Commission doesn't have a clause in it that says, only do it when you feel comfortable or only do it when things are going well. Uh, even in the midst of a pandemic, we still should be pointing people to the cross. And beyond pointing people to the cross, we should be showing the fruit of the spirit. Um, and this is what I love about where we are right now. People say, you love where we are? I love where we are right now because typically <laughs> you show someone that you have the Holy Spirit by the way you conduct yourself in church. Um, whether you go speaking in tongues, running around, or whatever, however, however, however it is that you feel the spirit leads you. But now God is taking that out of the church because the church is going virtual. And so now we have to show people that we have the Holy Spirit by the way we conduct ourselves outside the church. And I often say it, that you know, the world is watching and they're watching to see how many of us really have this Holy Spirit that we run around in church and dance about on Sundays. 
How many of us have it Monday through Saturday? How many of us have it on Facebook? Now's the time where we really have to show that we really are the believers. And so Galatians 5, 22, um, it says the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Um, he, this is what the spirit produces. So saying that you have the Holy Spirit means that your life, our lives should look like what these attributes say it should look like. We should be loving. We should be kind. We should have joy. We should be peaceful. Uh, we should be patient. And that's a tough one sometimes. We should be kind. We should be good. We should be faithful. We should be gentle with everyone. And we should have and exhibit self-control. And so because we're in a, in a season where um, it's easy to get frustrated and it's easy to feel like God has forgotten about us and it's easy to feel like things are unfair, I think tonight um, I just want to talk a little bit about making sure that our, um, our words line up with who the Holy Spirit say that we should be. Um, words are very, are very powerful. And we know the scripture in Proverbs 18, it says that life and death lie in the power of the tongue. But then even in a more practical sense, you can literally frame your day by the words that come out of your mouth in the morning. Um, you can frame your week. Um, you can frame life in your home by the words that come out of your mouth. And so James chapter three, uh, verse two, um, I, this is the NLT version. Uh, it says, indeed, we all make many mistakes. For if we can control our tongues, we'd be perfect and can also control ourselves in every other way. The Living Bible translation says that if anyone can control his tongue, it proves that he has perfect control over himself in every other way. Um, the tongue is impossible to tame. Um, James chapter three goes on to say in verse five, the tongue is a small thing that makes, a, that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And among all the parts of the body, the tongue is a flame of fire. There's a whole world of wickedness corrupting your entire body. It can set your whole life on fire for itself. It is set on fire by hell itself. It's saying that the tongue is a wicked instrument. Now, if you look at it, the tongue, the mouth, it's a wicked instrument. And then you look at Jeremiah 17 and 9, it says that the heart is wicked as well. Jesus said that out of your heart is what comes out of your mouth. And so you have to imagine that if your heart is already wicked and your tongue is, is something that's waiting to set hell, set hell on fire, if we don't control our heart and can take control of our mouth, then we're going to have a lot of problems in life and cause a lot of problems. The psalmist said in Psalm 141, verse 3, take control of what I say, O Lord, and guard my lips. I am starting to pray that prayer. I used to pray it once a day. I'm starting to pray that prayer all day um, before I interact with anyone, before I, and let's be, and let's be honest, we're, we're in a shelter in place order. We need to stay at home. So we might not have all the opportunities to be able to speak to people verbally. So let's just apply this same scripture to our thumbs and the things that we post and the things that we say on social media and things like that. Lord, take control of my thumbs, take control. And if we're honest with ourselves, when we're typing, we're speaking at the same time as well. So Lord, take control of my thumbs and my mouth because I don't wanna be the type of person that's looked at as a, as a divider. I wanna be a unifier in this sense. Um, and then uh, verse seven, James says, people can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and fish, but no one can tame the tongue. It is restless and evil, fully of deadly poison. Sometimes, James 3 verse 9, it praises our Lord and Father, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. And so blessings and curses come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this isn't right. James is showing us how dangerous the tongue is and how unpredictable it can be. One minute, the tongue is praising God. The next minute, the tongue is cussing up the saints. One minute, the tongue, the tongue is giving God glory. The next minute, the tongue is, is, is gossiping and spreading all kinds of lies in any window. This is, this, is, this is imperative that right now, especially now, Mother Hudson just said, especially when we're dealing with the public, yes, especially right now, um, it's imperative that if you say that you are a baptized, born-again believer, that not only um, does your walk on Sunday look like it, but our mouths throughout the week have to look, at, look like it as well, right? And so why is it so, this is why it's so important to have the Holy Spirit. Because our tongues, uh, we're not going to control ourselves. Our tongues are part of our flesh suit. And our flesh suit is never going to want to control itself. So it's important that we lean into the Holy Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit to put a bridle, put a guard over our mouth so that we can make sure that things we say are filtered through the Holy Ghost. Even when we're mad and we're upset, even when we're frustrated, right? There was, there was something that, um, that, that came up yesterday. I was, I was doing a, uh, a conversation about race relations 
in the body of Christ. And there was a statement that was made and it wasn't intentional, but it was very ignorant. And, you know, uh, if the people on the call weren't full of the Holy Spirit, someone might have gotten offended. And of course, the statement is made and it's Bishop Shepherd, what do you think about that? And I was like, oh, you asked me, I'll be on the spot. And immediately I had to take my camera and turn it off on Zoom so I can pray really quick because I didn't want to respond in the flesh because the tongue is very quick to go off in the flesh, right? And so you may be saying, you know, well, you know, I've been saved my whole life and la da 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 all that kind of good stuff. James 1.26 says, if anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, he deceives his own heart. This one's religion is useless. The Living Bible translation says, anyone who says he is a Christian but doesn't control his sharp tongue is just fooling himself and his religion isn't worth much. James lets us know that if anyone says that they're a believer, but they can't control their tongue, then they're really just fooling themselves. Proverbs 11 and 9, it says, with their words, the godless destroy their friends and the knowledge will rescue the, but knowledge will rescue the righteous. The tongue will cause you to destroy people. And the scripture says in James chapter 1, verse 26, again, that anyone who says they're a believer, but they can't control their tongue, they're just fooling themselves. There's a quote that I found, and it's an anonymous quote, but I think it's I think it's pretty powerful. It's talking about an individual. And the quote says, I am more deadly than the screaming shell of the cannon. I win without even killing. I tear down homes, I break hearts, I wreck lives. I travel on the wings of the wind, and no innocence is strong enough to intimidate me. No purity pure enough to daunt me. I have no regard for truth. I have no respect for justice. I have no mercy for the defenseless. My victims are as numerous as the sands of the sea and as often as innocent. I never forget and I seldom forget. My name is Gossip. Um, this, this, uh, this quote said that, that uh, my name is Gossip. And when you think about how deadly gossip is, how much of a destroyer gossip is, um, you really have to realize that your tongue needs to be under control. Our tongue needs to be under control. Uh, the tongue is powerful. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 19, it says that the Lord formed from the ground all the wild animals and all the birds of the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would call them, and the, name, the man chose a name for each one. The tongue is so powerful that whatever Adam called the, the animals in the garden, that's what they were named. And we challenge people in their premarital counseling all the time that if you want peace in your home, start to call out peace. Right? If you want joy in your home, start to call out joy. Right? If you want hell in your home, just start talking mess. You'll get that too. Right? But the tongue is just that powerful. Now, here's the danger. Right? Here's the danger of not controlling your tongue. Matthew 12, uh, verse 36. Uh, Jesus said, but I say to you, for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words, you were justified, and by your words, you'll be condemned. And so... Jesus says that I'm telling you that every empty, every, um, every uh, foolish word that comes out of our mouths, we'll have to answer for those, right? And, uh, and this is when they were, they were trying to entice him and they were talking about, you know, eating things that, that were against the law and all that kind of stuff. He says, no, he says, anything that you put in your mouth isn't what defiles you, it's what comes out of your mouth that defiles you. So you can eat a pork sandwich all day long, but, but, but using idle language and using foul language and idle words, that's what's going to get you in trouble, right? But listen to the benefits of keeping your mouth. Because I'm one of those people that say, don't tell me what to do. Tell me how it would how benefit me. Proverbs 21, um, I'm sorry, Psalm 15. Psalm 15, verse 1, it says, Lord, who may go and, who may go and find refuge and shelter in your tabernacle upon your holy hill? He says, Lord, who will find shelter? Who will find refuge in you? Verse two says, anyone who leads a blameless life and is truly sincere. Okay, that's good. Yeah, as long as I live a blameless life, that means I'll find refuge in God. But look at the next verse. Anyone who refuses to slander others, does not listen to gossip, never harms his neighbor, speaks out against sin, criticizes those committing it, commends the faithful followers of the Lord, keeps a promise even if it ruins him, does not crush his debtors with high interest rates, and refuses to testify against the innocent despite the bribes offered him, such a man will stand firm forever. The psalmist said that a person who does not gossip and slander others, amongst other things, will stand firm forever. So it's kind of important, not kind of, it is important that we make sure that we ask the Holy Spirit to check our mouths, 
All right, and then checking our mouths, we can also say check our hearts because as we said, as a, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so we're asking the Holy Spirit to check our mouths, check our hearts. And again, even on social media, it, it's, it's, I used to, I used to, um, I used to say what I wanted to say and didn't care about it because I felt like I didn't mean any offense. So if anyone takes offense to it, whatever, that's on them. And then the Holy Spirit started to deal with me with that because um, at the end of the day, I have to be mindful of who I am in Christ. We have to be mindful of who we are in Christ. And just because we say something that we don't think is offensive to anyone, it may actually be offensive to someone. And there's been several times where I've come back and said, you know what, if that last post offended you, please forgive me. That was not my heart. I was really trying to express myself a lot of da, da, da. And some people will comment, oh, it's not that serious. It really is that serious because I don't want anything that comes out of my mouth to cause anyone to stumble. I don't want anyone, anything that comes from my thumbs to cause anyone to stumble. Proverbs 21 and 23 says, whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from trouble. Yeah, well, imagine that. Some of us only in trouble because of our mouths. Not necessarily because we did something wrong. It's maybe because we said some things we had no business saying in the first place. Psalms 34, verse 12. Does anyone want to live a life that is long and prosperous? Bidding somebody in. Then keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. He says, if you want to live a life that's long and prosperous, then stop lying and stop speaking evil stuff. Look at the inverse of that. That's basically saying that, 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 um, that there can be voids in your life, not because of decisions that you made, but because of words that you spoke. Second Peter 3 and 10. For he who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. For he who would love life and, and see good days, then that person should not be speaking evil and his lips should stop speaking deceit. You see how powerful the tongue is? And we often think, well, yeah, you know, the power is just power and life and death in the, in the tongue. Yes, that's true. That's what the word says. But it's deeper than that. Your mouth, our mouths can actually get our souls in trouble. Our mouths can cause our lives to go down a path that we didn't even intend to go. You can work hard, go to work every day, save money, plan for retirement, you know, give to the church, all that kind of stuff. But then your mouth can negate every bit of blessing that could come your way. That's how, that's how dangerous it is. Mother Hudson says, plus when you hit sin, it's done, it's gone, it's out there. Yeah, Mother Hudson, hitting sin is the same way as saying it out of your mouth. Once it's out there, it takes form and it goes, it goes about its business. Sister Carla said, I'm guilty, I need to check my mouth, thank you Jesus. Amen, that's, I think that's a lot of us on here where we need to check our mouths. Um, uh, you know, and it's, it's, it's something that, that as, as I get older and, and, and you know, um, uh, and it's not even older in age, older as a father, older as, older as, as a mentor to young people and, you know, watching their foul mouths and all that kind of stuff. And it, it really reminds me that everything that comes out of my mouth, I have to make sure that it's, it's filtered by the Holy Spirit because I, and I'm going to show you a scripture in a minute that we all need to pray. But it, for me, it's, I want my words to be seasoned as the word says, I want my words to be a blessing to all that hear them. Right. Meaning that I want to talk, I want to speak in a fashion to where even if I'm not speaking to someone, if someone walks by me and overhears the conversation, they're blessed by that conversation. That's how we should, that's how we should want to speak, right? Because in our lives, we want our lives to reflect Christ so much so that if someone sees us that doesn't know us, they can just say, wow, she really encouraged me to walk a life according to the scriptures that God, that God placed for me, right? And so the same thing has to go with our mouths. We want our conversation to be so pure. I want our conversation to be so holy that even people that could be eavesdropping, and you know how people are when they eavesdrop. They eavesdrop to see if they can find some dirt. They want to know. And I wonder if Evander Sandy is going to say something negative about somebody. I want to hear what pastor, we call it ear hustling back in the day. I want to, I want to see what pastor's got to say about that, right? Wouldn't it be great if you gave them a mouthful of the Holy Spirit? Now go back and tell that. Go back and tell that you thought that you were going to catch me in a situation, but you caught some word. Um, <laughs> but I have to say, loose lips sink ships. Amen. Sister Crystal said, my mouth is better being in the presence of others to be the same. Yeah, that, that's, 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 uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Can somebody find that for me? Because I don't want to switch this off. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. This is in response to Sister Crystal saying, my mouth is better being in the presence of those who are doing the same. Mm -hmm. 
I know it's virtual, but y'all still bring your Bibles. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Would you just like someone to read? Yeah, verse 33, please. First Corinthians 15, 33. Don't be fooled by those who say such things for a bad company corrupts good character. That last part, bad company corrupts good character. And so Sister Crystal said, my mouth, I'm going to read it. My mouth is better being in the presence of others who do the same. That's so key. So if we find ourselves around people who don't want to speak godly, and it's causing us not to speak godly, then we need to find ourselves new people. Mm -hmm. uh, that's just, I, I can't even, I can't even put it any other way than that. We have to find ourselves new people. And listen, Sister Crystal, there, there are, and, I, and, I, and I, I talk about my brothers, my brothers from college, they're my roommates, and we've had this 20 plus year uh, friendship back from the college days up until now. And there was a period of time where I couldn't talk to them every day like I talk to them now because there was a period of time where neither of them were really trying to live a life, uh, a better life. They just wanted to, you know, and, and, and I would joke around a little bit and was, yeah, I'd go back and forth. And I used to feel like I can just flip the switch. I felt like I can joke around with them. I can tell crazy jokes. I can say crazy things and then flip the switch and turn into this man of God. But what happened was after a while, the two sides started to blend in one to another, right? You ever seen the, the movies where the cop goes undercover and he's undercover so long that, the, that, the, that his boss can't tell if he's really a cop anymore, if he's a criminal. That's kind of what happens with, with, with hanging out with bad company. Eventually, um, and, and this is something that a mentor told me, either you're rubbing off on them or they're rubbing off on you. And chances are, if they're not, if they're still cussing, that means that you're not rubbing off on them at all, which means that you're in a dangerous situation. Sister Estella said, I felt that today. The greatest thing about, about it, Sister Estella, is that you can acknowledge that you felt it today and you're still alive to get it right. Thank God for grace, which means that you don't have to fail it tomorrow, which means that you still have five hours left this evening, today, to where you don't have to fail it again. So thank you. And we've all been there. We've all messed up, right? Um, and, but controlling our mouth is so much bigger than negativity, so much bigger uh, than gossip. It's also about using hateful words. It's also about speaking against leadership, right? And I'm not just talking about me in leadership. I'm even talking about leadership as it pertains to our government. Right. We have to be very careful speaking against leadership because regardless of, of if we like the set leader or not, um, regardless of that, you know, you know, God allowed them to be in that position. And so there's things that happen in the White House. There's things that happen in the governor's mansion. There's things that happen uh, with our county supervisors. There's things that happen in our city where I don't agree with, but I'm very careful. I've learned to be very careful with the words that I speak concerning leadership, spiritually in the church. Um, and I know, I know whenever we speak of uh, speaking negative against leadership, we only focus on the pastor or the bishop. But the pastor and the bishop are not the only leaders in the church. So we have to be careful how we speak about Deacon Bobby. I know he gets on our nerves sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I, know he, I know he gets on our nerves sometimes. But he yes. so we, we, got, we, we got to be very careful with how we speak about Deacon Bobby. There you go. <laughs> and it's not just Deacon Bobby. Our our, our praise leaders, the the, late, the the men and women who lead us in worship, though they're leaders in the church. So we got to be very careful how we speak against leadership, right? You got to be careful how we talk about Evangelist Charlotte and how we talk about Brother John and, and Elder Baron. I, I'm just calling out random names. If I miss somebody, it's not intentional. We have to be very careful how we talk about leadership because leadership in the house might have been appointed by me, but it was anointed by God. Amen. Amen. I, may have, I may have laid hands and appointed these leaders, but they were anointed by God. So when we're discussing and we're, and we're criticizing and we're bad-mouthing leaders in the church, you're not really offending me. You're telling, you're telling God he didn't know what he was doing. Is that something? That's right. Amen. Yes. Trust me, I've had plenty of people go to God about me, I'm sure. You know, and guys, said, that's not your business. I know him for that, right? And so here's the solution. Here's the, here's the solution. And then we can kind of open it up a little bit. Uh, well, first of all, the, the, the solution, you know, is, is acknowledge it. Uh, Sister Estella just let us in that. Acknowledge it and repent. All right, well, that was me today. I messed up, right? And the greatest thing, the greatest thing about it is you don't have to acknowledge that anybody but God. When David sinned against, uh, with Bathsheba, um, he says, look, I messed up uh, with Bathsheba. I, I ruined, you know, I had Uriah killed. He says, but against thee and thee alone have I sinned. 
the greatest thing about our relationship with God is we don't have to go and confess. I mean, the scripture does say confess your sins one to another, but that you better be in the Holy yeah. Ghost plan yeah. to, to go and confess your sins because not everybody can handle your struggles, right? Yeah. So be very careful, be very careful. And especially for new believers, we, we want to just go and tell everybody everything. And you better, you better be led by the spirit before you do that. Because, you know, a lot of us, we, we have titles, but we're still human beings. And that's how a lot of gossip just starts. So go to God, go to God first. And then God may tell you, I need you to just go talk to Evangelist Sandy. She just may be able to help get you delivered. That's spirit led. You can go to her, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're not spirit led, don't go to anybody. Go to God and, and say, look, I messed up. I need to get this right. Um, Hebrews 12 and 14 says to try and stay out of all quarrels and seek to live a clean and holy life for one who is not holy will see the Lord. The other translation says follow peace, pursue peace with all men, right? With everyone. Now we are in a very contentious time in our nation. Um, you got all lives matter versus black lives matter versus blue lives matter versus animal lives matter versus everything matters, right? We got all that going on. Then you got Republicans and Democrats and it's amazing. It's like bloods and crits are not even the main thing anymore. There's all kind of different <laughs> going on there, right? right? Everybody, everybody's mad at everybody for something, right? But we have to be able to pursue me for pursue peace with all men, which means that it, which means that even if you don't believe that, I, like I believe, right? Uh, politically, you may be a staunch Democrat, and I'm a staunch Republican. I don't know. I, that shouldn't cause us not to have peace with each other. You may be able, you may believe in something else, uh, faith-wise, but I, but I have the job to pursue peace with you because my Bible tells me to pursue peace with all men, stay out of quarrels, right? So a lot of these, a lot of these things where we argue back and forth, and and Deacon Bobby, I love him. He's like my internet security guard too, right? Because some somebody will say something crazy to me, and he'll text, "Oh, he got me mad," and I'll say, "Yeah, but it's alright. Just let him go ahead and let him have it, right?" Because I need to. I, at the end of the day, we need to pursue peace with everyone. So regardless of how you treat me, I have a mandate in the scripture to pursue peace with you. Uh, Mother Hudson says, oh, Lord, now I have to take off my shoes. You're stepping on my toes. Well, I'm wearing sandals. So there you go. All right. So, <laughs> and then Sister Carla says, amen, keep the mouths off of God's anointing. Amen. And keep mouths off of God's anointing. And I just want to amen. say that uh, you know, the bishop and the pastor are not the only ones that are God's anointing. That's right. Yeah. It's more than just me. All right. Um, this is the prayer. This is the prayer that I said I would tell you all about. Uh, Psalm 19 and 14, it says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. That is a prayer. That's a scripture that we've been praying. When I was coming, when I was growing up uh, in the pulpit, we were taught to pray that prayer before we preached because we wanted, to, we wanted God to guide our lips because we wanted to make sure that we didn't preach anything that was heresy. We, wanted to, we didn't want to preach anything that was against uh, what his word said. And so we use it as preachers. But as I got older, I realized I need to have this prayer for my everyday life. Forget just mm -hmm. preaching on Sunday, Lord. Every day, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Words of my mouth, meditation of my heart. Why? Because the heart is wicked, right? The heart is wicked. That's what Jeremiah 17 and 9 says. It's wicked and deceitful. No man can really know it. So because the heart is wicked and because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, Lord, not only do I need my words to be right, but I need my heart to be right as well. Mm. And that's, my, that's the prayer that we have to have. And I used to say, I used to pray it every day. And now having two or three Zoom meetings a day, I got to pray before every meeting. <laughs> like, Lord, Lord, just let my words in my heart be, be acceptable to you before I open my mouth. Because I, at the end of the day, I want to represent you in all that I do, not just on Sunday morning, but even on Zoom, even at the gym, even anywhere, right? Um, let me see here. All right. Please repeat that scripture. Okay. I'm sorry, uh, Minister Sue. Um, hmm. If you put something in the chat on Zoom, I'll get to that at the end. I can't do both at the same time. Uh, Psalm 19 and 14, let the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer, okay? Um, the Message Bible, um, it, it tackles James 3, verse 5 this way. It says, a bit in the mouth of a horse controls the whole horse. A small <laughs> rudder on a huge ship in the hands of a skilled captain sets a course in the face of the strongest wind. A word out of your mouth may seem of no account, but it can accomplish nearly anything or destroy it. 
And so if you look, if you ever, if you, if you, if you don't know what a horse pit is and you're not familiar with horses, we have two big dogs. Um, one is big and one is on his way to be really big. And um, my wife, and I'm going to pick on her, we ran out of treats, we ran out of dog treats. And the dog treats you normally get, they're these big dog treats that we normally get, right? Uh, the, the biggest milk bowl. We right. And so we ran out of treats and my wife says, I'm going to go get some treats for the dogs. And she goes home and she brings home this box of treats. But she gets the treats for like the little Shih Tzu puppies, right? The little Shih Tzu <laughs> <laughs> And they're sitting on my, they're sitting on my dresser right now because, and I tell her, it's like, these are Tic Tacs to these dogs. They're like little candies to these dogs. They're going to throw these things all over the place, right? But this one's funny. Benji is, Benji is about 11 months now and he's big and he's strong. And when we let him in the house, he takes off down the hallway, he hits a hard left and he runs straight into his crate and he sits there and he waits for this little small Tic Tac treat. It's amazing how this little small piece of Tic Tac treat controls that boy. Nothing else really works. You can yell at him, he does not care. We, he, he just, I mean, you can, you can hit him with a knee, he doesn't care about it, but you have that little treat and it controls him. And this is what the word is saying about the tongue. The tongue is probably the smallest part of the body but it can control everything. The tongue can control your day. If you say I'm sick, you're going to be sick. The tongue can control. If you say I'm fed up, you're going to be fed up. But if you say I'm going to have a great day in Jesus, you're going to have a great day in Jesus. But it says in the message Bible that the tongue, the word out of our mouth, it may seem insignificant, but it can accomplish nearly anything or it can destroy anything as well. There's that stuff. This is Denise says, what you say can represent who you are. You better preach. Yes. We're, we're at a day and a time right now. And I, and I love it because I keep asking God for insight as to why the churches have to go virtual, what's going on. And another thing that he showed me, thank you for saying that. Another thing that he showed me is now we cannot hide behind the veil. We cannot hide behind the pulpit. We cannot hide behind the pews. We cannot hide behind our church clothes. Now we really have to be who we say that we are. Isn't that, isn't that something? How sometimes we use church itself as a mask and God is saying, nope, not in this season. What's going to happen now is you're going to have to really be who you said that you have been all these years. Right? So what do we do? Right. First of all, we need to speak edification. We need to speak growth. We need to speak positivity. We need to speak things that are conducive to showing the love of God. Ephesians 429 says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth but that which is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Now, that section of Ephesians 4 um, talks about grieving the Holy Spirit. And you know the scripture that says, don't quench the spirit, right? We know that we know that scripture, that scripture. don't grieve it. And, 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 we used to, and we think that it just means don't stop a praise break from happening, right? Don't stop people from praising. But it's beyond that, because again, we have to start thinking outside of Sunday morning services, because for now, there won't be Sunday morning gatherings. So this word applies throughout everyday life. So how do you grieve the Holy Spirit? Well, we grieve the Holy Spirit by speaking corrupt words. We grieve the Holy Spirit by using foul and abusive language. We grieve the Holy Spirit by typing and texting foul and abusive language, right? And this is the greatest thing about it. Before we type it, we thought it. Before we say it, we think it. Unless, unless you guys, you all are like me when I was in my early 20s. I just said it and then thought about it later. But after a while of living on earth and getting mature, before you say it, you actually think about saying it. And the moment between thought and, and, and speaking, there's an opportunity to ask the Holy Spirit to come in and take that thought under subjection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, the scripture says that we bring every thought, right? And we snatch it and make it right. to the will of God. Yes, yeah, that's, that's actually concerning our, that's concerning our life. That's concerning us. And so before we say it, and, and this, this is just, you know, uh, everyday life, marriage, couples, before you say it, before you start that argument, you have plenty of time to think about it. And in between thought and, and, and a lot of things, that, a lot of things happen because we don't know what to do with that space between thought and speaking. But if we if we if we learn to check our heart at the instant that it's thought of, and we ask God to bring that thought into suggestion, that'll stop a whole lot of uh, arguments, mm -hmm. whole lot of issues, right? Mm -hmm. We make a choice, and so. But it says in Ephesians four twenty nine, it says um, that it may impart grace to the hearers, meaning that everyone who hears our conversation, even the people that we're not speaking to, should have some grace imparted unto them. Elder Franklin, he's on. Uh, we 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 
well, we used to go to the gym before they shut them down again, but we would go to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we would go to the gym and, and we, 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 we didn't, we don't work out together. We're just there uh, together. And so he's on one side of the gym, I'm on the other side of the gym and we're just working out. And the people look at us like, oh yeah, those are the two brothers. They just assume we're brothers. And that's fine. You know, we walk in and you are brothers. So we walk in and, and, but then at the end of the workout, we'll be having, we'll have conversations with the owners or, you know, random people on their way out the door. And this last week, so on two separate occasions, two people came to us, we don't know them, asked them where our church was, um, you know, what time our services start and are we online and all that kind of stuff. Why? Because they overheard our conversations. And they were saying, you guys are always upbeat and so full of positivity. I heard you say, God, where do you go to church? This is, this is how, this is how we, can, we know that our tongues are in control. Because it, it's, it's, what is your vocabulary when you think no one's listening? Ah, uh, come on. What are you saying when you think no one is paying attention, right? What are we, what are we discussing when we think, you know, and, 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 and if we're honest with ourselves, we could be uh, cleaning, we could trip and fall. And if the first thing that comes out of our mouth when we trip or fall is a four-letter word, then chances are we got a heart issue really quick, right? Amen. Yeah, yeah. And it's just ouch. And Mother Hudson, you said stepping on toes. I have on sandals, so I'm like, this, this is this, this is hitting me too. All right. Uh, uh, someone said we choose. They're logged on on the Word of Life page. I believe that's Sister Terry because I see everyone else. Yes, we do it's choose. Me. I don't know how to get on as myself. Oh. <laughs> You broke it. All right. <laughs> yeah. But but we make we make a choice. We make a choice. We make a choice. And before I go to the next aspect, um, the scripture says in Philippians 4, uh, verse 4 or 5, for, uh, for us to let our gentleness be known to all men. And mm -hmm. our gentleness, if we if we're in gentleness is a, is a piece of the fruit of the spirit, it's a part of the, the fruit of the spirit. If we're walking in gentleness, then we will stop and think before we say those words. Because if we if we really tell on ourselves, when we're arguing, we say things to hurt the other person. We say things to shut the argument down. We say things to win the argument by any means necessary. But if we're walking in the spirit of gentleness, before those nasty, vile words that can crush someone's spirit come out of our mouths, we're giving the Holy Spirit room to snatch that thought and bring it under subjection before we speak. And sometimes it's best just not to speak at all until the Holy Spirit releases you to speak. And that's the hard part because I really want to say it, right? <laughs> the next thing is, um, first thing is we got to speak things that for growth, things that will grow. Um, the second thing is uh, to speak life. Again, the power of life and death, lie, 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 lie within the tongue. Those who love it and indulge it will eat its fruit and bear the consequences of their word. But the, the Living Bible translation says, those who love to talk will suffer the consequences. Men have died for saying the wrong thing. Those who love to talk will suffer the consequences. Men have died for saying the wrong thing. Our mouths are getting us in a lot of trouble even before our feet can arrive to the scene. And it's important that we ask the Lord to put our, to bring our, our mouth under, put a guard over our mouth or just filter. Let me filter everything that I want to say through you. God bless you, Elder Regina Barrett and Sister Tierra, I see you. Uh, we need to, we need to learn. Look. Yes, I'm going to, um, and as Charlotte said, we need to learn to listen. Um, let's go back to the book of James. Uh, James 1. Yeah. Mm -hmm. James 1, we'll drop down to verse 19. Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You all must be quick to listen, slow to speak, or slow to get angry. Human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. All right, so he says we should be slow to speak and quick to mm -hmm. listen. I've been asked repeatedly um, from uh, my uh, my colleagues, my fellow pastors that are white. They've been uh, they've asked, how do we reconcile? How do we heal with all this racial unrest? What can we do? How can we? And the first thing they, one of them asked the other day. It says, okay, so how do we um, how do we partner with the black and brown pastors to show a united front? How do we understand? How do we know? Because we never walked in those shoes. And this scripture, it just jumped out to me last week, the second time I was asked. I said, we need to be quick to listen and slow to speak, mm -hmm. right? 
Mm-hmm. Be quick to listen and slow to speak. Imagine, and let's get off of civil unrest and racial re- reconciliation. Let's just talk about person to person relationships. Imagine how much peace we will have in our lives with other people if we were quick to listen and slow to speak. Yes. What happens in an argument is you say what you have to say, and instead of listening to the other person, we're already forming what we're going to say next. Mm-hmm. Okay? Well, I think you should do this and this and that, and then pause. It's your turn. And then they come back and they tell us what they think that we should do, but we're not listening to them. We're formulating our notepad to get them back, you know, right then and there. Because why? We're, we're, we're instead of being uh, slow to speak and, and quick to listen, we're slow to listen and quick to speak. That's dangerous, right? That's very dangerous. So but the Hudson says, um, I know my coworkers get tired of me. I call on God all day for anything. Little things, if I drop something, I call on God to help me pick it up, whatever, I'm calling his name. Listen, <laughs> And she's telling the truth. We met, uh, Elder Franklin and I met a nurse that works at her job uh, just two days ago on Monday. And we were in a checkout line after leaving the gym, the last workout that we had. And we, um, we, and we, just so you all know, we don't talk about it much or what have you, um, but Word of Life has been a blessing to the COVID nurses uh, at Desert Hospital, Eisenhower Hospital, as well as Desert Age Project. Um, I think we've sent, oh, I want to say over 30 pizzas um, to each of these locations in the last two weeks, just to say, look, we're praying with you. We know you guys are working hard. You know, just have lunch on us or what have you. Um, and Desert Age Project was the one that we just uh, sent pizzas to on Tuesday. And we ran into a nurse from there. And I said, I, she said, what church do you guys go to? And we told her. And I said, um, I said, one of our church mothers works at Desert Age Project. I said, uh, Joanne Hudson. She said, oh, I just love Joanne. She's so sweet. Oh, and she really loves God. And we just started laughing because we're like, yeah, that's her. Right. But again, what she said, she says, I dropped something at work and I call on God first. Right. She, because obviously she wants, she wants people to see that the words that come out of our mouth should be a blessing to you as well, okay? All right. Um, then uh, the next thing is we have to speak encouragement, okay? Speak encouragement. Colossians 4, um, li- verse 5. Live wisely among those who are not believers and make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be gracious and attractive so that you will have the right response for everyone. Okay, this is not the time to prove how superior we are theologically. This is not the time to beat people up because they don't know the books of the Bible. This is not the time to beat people up because their faith may be wavering. Because honestly, right now, a lot of lifelong churchgoers are now questioning if God is even real because of what God because of what God is allowed to happen in the land, right? And this is not the time to beat people up um, and all that kind of stuff because he says we should let our conversation be gracious and attractive. So we will have the right response for everyone. That means even people that, that, that challenge our faith, we should be able to have a response for them that's gracious. People that are falling away from the faith, we should have a response for them that's gracious as well. All right. And then finally, um, when in doubt, and you don't know what to speak, and you just got to speak something, speak the word. Just speak the word. Um, Sister Carla said, I'm getting there. We're getting there too. We're all getting there together. All right. We're getting there together. Um, but to speak the word, you have to know the word. Okay. Amen. Um, I think we have a pandemic in this country of people speaking stuff that's not biblical and <laughs> call it, call it, yeah. we're doing more damage than good speaking things that are not in the Bible and saying it's the word of God. Psalm 119 and 11, David says, I've hidden your word in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Uh, yeah, David said, I hid your word. I mean, I studied that word and it's in my heart. That way I won't sin against you. But the main thing I want us to understand is that the word is in his heart. And if if you can if you can just fast forward, uh, if Jesus doesn't come back soon, we can experience something on US soil like they're experiencing in China, where they're burning all the Bibles. Yeah. where Bibles are forbidden. And if you're caught with a Bible, you can be punished for, to death. What are we going to do as believers in America when we can't access a Bible, if we can't access a Bible? Do we have enough word in our hearts to sustain us? 
what happens? What happened? Well, I just use I just use my Bible on my phone because I ain't got to carry you know carry no Bible with me. Well, we just saw how three four weeks ago T Mobile and Sprint shut the whole network down for a day. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean the entire day, and don't yeah. believe. Don't don't act like we're and we were bragging. Yeah, we got Verizon. We ain't got those problems. Verizon can do the same thing just like that. <laughs> so what happens? I'll take it a step further. What happens if what happens if and when the time comes where they just shut internet completely down and you don't have a light, you can't open your laptop and go to Bible Gateway to get the word. Do we have enough word in our heart to sustain us? The crazy thing about the human body. It's said that the human body can survive off its own fat for no less than 14 days. Meaning that if we were stranded somewhere and there was no food, that the human body can sustain itself just off of water alone for up to 14 days. Now, some of us are bigger than others, so we might be able to have an extra couple days. I don't know. But if I, on average, <laughs> it's like 13, 14 days, the human body can sustain uh, just off its fat alone. Question. Do you have enough word in you to sustain yourself for 13, 14 days should the day come and we don't have Bibles? Amen. How are we calling it the word of life and we don't depend on it to live? Yeah. Mm. True. Good. That's good. Yeah. And then finally, Joshua said in Joshua 1 and 8, this book of the law should not, well, God told him, this book of the law should not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate it on day and night. So that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you'll have good success. The, the word says that the reason why we need to, I said we need to speak the word, but to speak the word, you got to know it. David said, um, David said, I've hid his word in my heart, so I won't sin against him. And then furthermore, uh, the book of the law shall not depart. I should keep it in me and meditate on me. Therefore, I can have a prosperous way. If we're looking for the pathway to success, it's not through the school system. It's not through um, training. It's through the word of God. We want the pathway of success. I don't care how great customer service you have. Uh, if you don't have the word of God, you don't have the pathway to success. Right? Promotion doesn't come from the east or the west, north and south. It comes from him. So if we want to succeed in life, we have to be in the word of God. But my concern is many of us are going to starve to death. Um, simply because we don't have enough word in us. And the day comes where that movement of persecution travels from east to west and hits this soil in the United States and we don't have access to Bibles and we don't have access to BibleGateway.com and BibleHub.com and, and our cell phone service can be restricted. Do we have enough word in us to sustain and live? I'll tell you this. We fast forward to the tribulation period where the Antichrist comes and, and the false Messiah presents himself and many people are deceived. Do you know how people are deceived? They're deceived because they don't know the word. And if we don't know the word, we're going to be set up for a deception. So maybe this timeout is great. Maybe this timeout will prove because all things work together for, good of those, for the good of those that love God and call them according to his purpose. Maybe this timeout is great. Maybe this timeout says that on Sunday morning when you log on, I want you to worship corporately and get the word for an hour. But the rest of the week, I need you to get in the word for yourself. Amen. Maybe the timeout is good for us. You know? So that's it. Are there any questions tonight? Any comments? Facebook Live, you can comment and question. I can read those. Zoom, there's two. Uh, rubbed off on my dad, so now he slips and curses in front of me are the kids, and he will he will apologize. Sister Matoya said, her, and if you don't know her dad, her dad is a funny character boy. And so now, so that so at least now he apologizes. Okay, it's working. All right, it's working. Any anyone else? Any any comments? Any questions? Um, I don't want to keep everybody long. Um, the longer than we have to. Yes. yes. <laughs> Deacon Bobby, is there anything you want to share with the rest of the class? I'm just kidding. All right. So. <laughs> you want to tell him? <laughs> pick, pick on the dumb one in the class. <laughs> Detention for you, sir. <laughs> no, um, okay. Uh, how do you tell the word to someone? How do you tell to someone who always has an issue with the word? The question is, how do you tell the word to someone who always has an issue with the word? Very patiently. 
mm -hmm. um, very very patiently. Um, and and you all can chime in, but this is what I this is what I found out. Uh, my father was was one of those people that always had an issue with the word. And you all know he passed away a couple of years ago. Um, and whenever I tried to approach him with the word, I don't want to hear all that stuff. He wouldn't say stuff. He'd say something else, right? And what I found out was, first of all, patience, because Christ was patient with me. But then second of all, my lifestyle proved more valuable than any words that I could give him. And so it's one thing to tell someone the word, but then let them see it in your lifestyle. And then on my father's deathbed, the last three days he was alive, we had conversations about faith and all that kind of stuff. And it was, it was amazing to know that um, even though for the longest time he rejected the thought of me preaching the word to him or the thought of Christ, when things got really serious, he said, call my son, I need him to come pray. And so there was a period of time where he and I didn't talk at all because I was just that frustrated with him. It was like, and I, I'm the type where I need to remove myself before I cuss you up. I'll just be honest with you, right? That the, the Lord, the, 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 that's the flesh. The flesh just wants to, you know. And so in order to preserve my witness, in order to preserve who I am in Christ, I need to know my limits and know when to walk away. And so what my father, he pushed every button on the face of the earth because I believe the enemy wanted to use him to bring me out of character. And I knew at that moment, I wasn't strong enough to withstand that because I can, like David said, I can take it from a stranger, but I can't take it from someone close to me. And so I walked away from it. And then in that period of walking away, my father started to reflect. And the next time I really heard from him was, I need you to pray for me. So I think at some point you can stop giving the word and start living the word before them. And I believe that's what, well, that's what will bring the change about. Um, there was a comment in here. Bishop Johnson is on. Get, get, man, get to have you, sir. Get to have you. Um, Elder Tinker says, our lives will speak values. That is absolutely correct. Um, there was a saying that said, I'd rather see a sermon than hear a sermon. Um, and we're, again, living in a day where everyone's being inundated with the word, especially now. On Sunday morning, you can literally go to eight churches within two hours, right? So there's word everywhere, right? right? But when all the word is done, I want to see if anybody's really believing and walking what they're preaching and what they're speaking about. Um, you're welcome, Sister Travis. Uh, Mother Hudson said the word can build or bridge relationships. Yes, the word, because again, Hebrews 12, pursue peace with all men, right? So because, mm. of, because of the yes. word of God, I can build a relationship with you and we don't even we don't even see eye to eye, right? Because of the word. We saw we saw the funniest thing um, at the gym on Monday. We were getting ready to leave because the gym we went to was closed. And we found the gym in Palm Springs. And we said, let's just run down there. They're gonna be open till five or six o'clock. And there was a man standing in the corner. He had on a Make America Great hat, Make America Great again hat, the red hat, you know. He had his hat on, and then every day at the gym, I think he would kind of flaunt his affection for President Trump in front of us just to see if there'd be an issue. Like he just find a way to come and stand right next to us. And so we're getting ready to leave and we're going to Palm Springs and he says, hey guys, hey, did you guys find an open gym? And I said, yeah. I said, we got one in Palm Springs. He says, oh, he says, uh, can I go with you? And Elder Franklin looks at me and I look at him. We both say, yeah, man, come on, right? Now, we, uh, we, we understand that there's an irritating factor that goes with that, but the word says, follow peace, pursue peace with all men. So we took them with us and come to find out at the end of our workout, we actually all had a lot in common, right? The word became a bridge. The word became a bridge to build relationships. Imagine if we all use the word to go ahead of us on social media and work and everything else. I, I think we, we'd avoid a lot of confrontation. Um, Sister Minister Suzanne said we need to live the word. Uh, Tim Tinker says he gets the word at home. Anybody else? Anyone else? Anyone else? It's quiet. <laughs> it's like it's like Wednesday nights when we're together. It's like, like it's quiet. I'm a little scared now. All right. Um, <laughs> Pastor, you have anything to add? Um, sorry, just taking me a little bit of notes here. Amen. I would um, most definitely say that the word is um, the word is our lifeline. You know, it's our lifeline. So if we don't know it, we don't have a lifeline, right? So 
Bishop used to say, okay, if you don't know any scriptures in the Bible, if you could just call on the name of Jesus and, until you learn yourself a scripture or two, um, that still uh, works to this day. But it doesn't mean that that's all we're supposed to get by with is the name of Jesus. Because if that was the case, we wouldn't have this book uh, that he left for us. So the word is very important. We all have this time, uh, no matter if you still work from home or if you go into work, everything else is pretty much shut down. So none of us have any excuses as to why we can't go deeper into our word. Um, I love the fact that the app has the, um, the uh, what do you call it? The um, Bible plan. Bible plan. Yes, I love the fact that the app has the Bible plan. So if we don't know where to start reading, you know, if we're new or if we're old or we just haven't read it in a long time, we don't know where to start, go to the Bible plan and get started. Go to the Bible plan and get started. It's not as hard as we make it. So we can do it. Uh, and we're still here one for another. And this word is going to be what keeps us. It's going gonna, it's gonna to keep us. So read your word, everyone. Read your word. Read your word. Thank you, Pastor. Sister Michelle, mm -hmm. Sister Michelle and Sister Crystal said thank you for the great word. And uh, great, we're, we're honored to, like I said, we're, we've always been cre a creative ministry. So, okay, well, you want us to go um, limit the access to the building and gathering? All right, well, we'll just go virtual. We have no problem with that, right? So we're just, we're just grateful that we can still proclaim the name of Jesus without persecution. Right? And mm -hmm. I think... Mm -hmm. uh, I think in all things we need to give thanks and so um things are not ideal we would love to have a church full of people but right now that's not the situation so on all things give thanks we can still lift his name we can Amen. still, we can Amen. still Amen. preach and evangelize mm -hmm. and yes. we're going to this time around we're going to create an online membership as well so if people want to become an online member of word of life they'll be able to there's no need in being yeah. complacent and frustrated when God is still moving, right? He's still moving. Yes. Um, the the um, thing that Pastor was talking about on the app, um, can you all see that? Yes. Oh, yeah. So right at the okay. bottom, there is a, the middle tab at the bottom that says Bible. If you touch it, it brings up the, the reading plan for the entire, for the rest of the year, okay? Whoa. So, um, the reading plan is a little lengthy. Um, you know, there's like a there's like a chapter or two at a time, but you don't have to read all two, three chapters. You can just read what you can. The whole point of this is to get you reading. And uh, we, we talk about this in men's Bible study while well, back. We don't study for length, we study for depth. So if we get stuck on two verses, dig deeper in those two verses, it's just a habit of opening the word and feeding yourself, your spirit, something throughout mm -hmm. the week. Right? And this is a way that we can all do this together. Right, we can all. So this morning I did. I got up. Well, this afternoon um, I read um, Exodus 37 to 38, Psalm 19, and Acts 11. Uh, tomorrow, um, tomorrow I'll be reading. Uh, oh, it's going to give. It's going to put. It's going to post tomorrow, tomorrow morning. So tomorrow morning I'll be reading whatever that is as well. So if you don't, if you can't read all three chapters, you can go through scripture by scripture. Yeah. Just read. Just open the word and read something. All right, just read something. Do you know how powerful a study on Jesus wept is? The first, the, the shortest, the shortest verse in the Bible, yeah. Jesus, those, those two words. But I dare you to go deeper into those two words and find out why. Look at the fact that it proved that not only was he God in the, in the son of God, but he was God in the flesh. And so his human nature came out. That's, that's a deep study just for those two words. So just, yeah. just read, just read. If it's just the verse today, just read it, y'all. Just read it, all right? Um, also on the app, you're able to go back. This this lesson will go up on the app. It'll be up within uh, before ten o'clock, within the hour. Um, you're able to go back and review um, uh, a few weeks behind the uh, of lessons, Sunday schools, Bible studies, messages, and all that kind of stuff. Um, it'll connect you directly to the Facebook page, the YouTube page, the Instagram page. So everything is all just at your fingertips. And then you can give right here at your, finger, at your fingertips as well, all right? So people ask, they say, well, I still like to give cash and checks. You can still do that. Drive up to the church on Sunday, drop it off. You can put it in the mailbox, whatever. But for those that prefer electronically giving like we do, it's simple right there on the app, right? It's all right there. So um, I'm, I'm excited about that. Minister Barry, God bless you, sir. The maestro, God bless you. Uh, Sister Travis, God bless you. Um, 
Any more questions? Any more? Any anything else? Um, anything? Bishop, I've I have not taken notes on the app yet. Uh, when we take notes on the app, are those notes there? Do they stay there for us to go back and reference, or do are they just for that time? How does it work? You would ask a hard question. Let me see. Let's see. That's a good question. Uh, Thank you. No, I'm looking now. It actually stays there. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. So I just opened. I just opened last Sunday's message, the entitled "Sit at His Feet." So you have three options, right from uh, right from the app. You have three options. You can download the message onto your phone, um, or you can take notes, or you can share it, upload it to Facebook, uh, wherever you want to, uh, email it, text it, however you want to do it. All right. So, but then on the notepad, you can take notes, and then you can go back and reflect them later. It all stays there. So that's pretty cool. Yes. Yes, that's awesome. Thank you. Oh, I, didn't, I didn't know that. All right. That's that's. Thank you. Um, for uh, yeah, all right. Um, other other Regina says, Mother Jolan, you are not old. You are the best. We try to tell her. Uh, right. She's uh, we we try to tell her. Elder Tinker says they have books on a dining room table. Yeah, if you all could see, um, I had to actually turn my camera around because on this other side, books are everywhere. But it's all about study. It's all about growing in the word. All right, all about growing in the word. Sister Denise, God bless you. Um, we love you. Uh, we miss your smile and your hugs. And uh, y'all, we're gonna be okay. We're gonna be all right. We're gonna be okay. Sister Estella said, "What is the app?" The app is Word of Life uh, DHS. Word of Life DHS. Yes. Yeah, I just found it. Yep. Go into the App Store, either Apple or Android or Amazon for Kindle. Um, Word of Life DHS. It's there. I think um, we were already over 100 downloads, um, which was good. So uh, we're obviously looking to um, grow beyond that. So please download it, share it, let people know. I think it's pretty cool and intuitive. And I think it was, um, I actually think it was, it, was, it was something that was prophetic because when God had us start working on this in February, we had no idea we were gonna need it as much as we need it now. Um, it took two or three months to get fully developed and up and running. And now that it is, it's like, okay, God, now I know why you sent us in this direction. So, yes, it's there. It's there. And it's free. So, um, that's thank free. You, and then you. starting this Huh? Oh, thank you, baby girl. Starting this week, well, there's a messaging function that will be installed on the app. So, um, we'll be able to get announcements to you via the messaging app as opposed to everyone having to check their email. That's so yeah, we're working this thing out. So it's, it's, uh, it's coming together quite well. For those of you that are watching on Facebook Live that are not a part of the Word of Life directly, you can still download the app and, uh, and keep checking things out. Um, and then soon you'll hear from us about wanting to join this ministry as an online member and you'll be able to keep it. Would you? Right. Yeah, I it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be cool. All right, anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Also, the podcast. I have a weekly podcast. It's on the map as well, so you can um, you can listen to the podcast as well. So everything is there. It's all at our fingertips. All right, all at our fingertips. Okay. All right. Any, anyone else? Kayla, you have anything since you're the only kid on tonight? No. I don't. <laughs> If you all, um, says, do you have anything? And she says, no. <laughs> if you all, if you all didn't see it, um, if you all didn't see it, Kayla made her television debut today on NBC at five o'clock. Um, yeah. Uh, they, came, they came by the church to ask me a couple of questions, and I said, "Can my daughter be on camera with me?" They said, "Of course she can." So um, Deacon Bobby, she stood up in a chair, but we cleaned it out, and. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, and so uh yeah but she made her television debut and so yeah she was amazing mother hudson says embrace this liberty while we can thank you mother hudson listen yes. this is yes. please take this time yes rest 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 but also yes. be productive okay Amen. there's a lot of things that we have on our to-do list that we're unable to get to because the rat race keeps us occupied but this is a valuable time for us it, for the visionaries and the creatives this is the time, write the business plan, launch the do what you gotta do, do it, do it now. 
um, for the people that for the people that have children, this is the time to invest in your children, right? These, these are these, we have a golden opportunity for people that want to get healthy. Now you have time to meal prep and plan your meals and all that kind of stuff. We have all this all this time at our leisure. Take advantage, but most importantly, take the time to get closer to God as well. All right. Um, yes, I will elaborate. So this is what's happening starting this weekend. Uh, we're going back to our production team only. Um, and we're going to do this for until uh, the governor says, um, you know, to do different. Okay. And that production team is our, uh, our praise and worship uh, music ministry, um, myself and, you know, uh, Pastor and Kayla and a couple of men that are there uh, for security. Um, we're not locking the door. Um, I refuse to lock the door in God's house when we're there. So we're not going to lock the door. Um, someone may come in needing prayer. Someone may come in, come in and I've seen it where someone has come to church suicidal and left there full of life, okay? So I refuse to shut the door on anybody who's coming and really needs to press their way in. Um, but we are encouraging, we're strongly encouraging everyone to stay home and watch virtually. And if you can't watch virtually at 1030, you do have a half, you have a YouTube page, you can watch it all week long, but we're encouraging you to stay connected that way. And because we are going back to this order, the first time we went through it, everyone was very motivated about their giving and they gave you all. I mean, we just, we gave, we just gave like we were in the house above and beyond. We need that same energy. As the young people say, keep that energy. We need that same energy because we still have a mortgage. We still, we still, and, and unlike, unlike other entities, our, our bank is not, they're not giving uh, deferments. They're not giving uh, us like, no, we still have to pay the mortgage, okay? Um, we still have to pay the light bill. We still have to pay all that kind of stuff. All right. So we're going to ask you all to please continue to cheerfully give um, so we can keep this thing, keep this building moving. And we want to, we want to have a building to come back to when this is all over. Right. I'd hate for us to say, okay, we can, we can gather again and see it and see a foreclosure notice. That would be, that would be, that would be tough. Right. Um, uh, so Sierra says, everyone she tells about the app thinks it's so dope and that's it. That the church has an app tell them that's what we're trying to do we'll get it out to everybody right elder tinker says he's concentrating on his family amen right. this is it we have yeah yeah golden opportunity all right golden opportunity so um sister terry did i miss anything we don't have any announcements um no, you covered it all bishop and we always appreciate you we appreciate our first family, but I must say this. Our bishop has a birthday, people, this Sunday. He's finding it on Dello. We had initially planned to surprise him and honor him on Sunday. And although that cannot happen in the way that we hoped, uh, watch your email and something will be sent out in a, in a way that we are all able to surprise him. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. I'm honestly, um, I'm honestly excited because um, this is the first full year um, that I've had a healthy year in over seven or eight years um, because of the breathing issues and all that. So I don't know if you all remember, but my surgery was last year on July 2nd. And that was a surgery that corrected a lot of the issues that I had breathing wise. And so this is the first full year of healthy breathing, being able to smell and all that kind of stuff that I've had in a while. So I'm just grateful to have another year. So I'm excited. So thank you. It's a very good guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. So if all hearts and minds are clear, uh, Pastor, you can pray us out of here. And um, yeah. Amen. All right, everyone. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you on this evening, Father. We give you all the praise and all the glory, God, that's due you on this evening. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity, Father God, to break bread in your word, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that we still have the liberty, Father God, to open up our Bibles, Father God. We still have the opportunity to come together, even though it is not face to face, Father God, it is through technology, Father God, we're still together, Lord. We thank you for everything that you're providing for your people, Father God. Lord, we want to take this time, Lord, to get deeper in your word, Father God. This coronavirus, yes. Father God, yes, it is taking lives, Father God. Lord, we don't know what your plan is, Father, but we do know, Father God, that you're giving us another opportunity, Father God, to get closer to you. 
So Lord, let us be wise, Father God, and take this opportunity, Father God, not just to rest, Father God, not just to slumber, Father God, Father God, to get closer to you, Father. Lord, let that be our, our number one priority, Father God, is to get closer to you. So we thank you, Lord, for everything that you have afforded us, Father God. We thank you for every blessing that you have already planned for us, Father God. We thank you, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you help us be blessings one to another, Father God, with your word, Father God, in word and in deed, Father. We thank you, Lord. Your word is our life sustainer, Father God. So we pray that it is never taken from us, Father. And in order to ensure that, Father God, we need to be able to hide it in our hearts. So we, mm -hmm. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We give you all the glory. Until we meet again, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I love you all. Elder Tinker said I need a new smoker. Um, just what I thought I'd share that with you. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry for those that are may not be watching. That no. Smoker means barbecue grill. All right. <laughs> that's right. That's it. Right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> correct that real quick. That I, I love this the virtual bible study i love the fact that i'm able to be on zoom and also i'm able to see it on my phone as well that is amazing mm -hmm. I, I love that i mean it's just, amen. I love it. amen amen god is good he really is good yes. this amen. is uh so it's interesting because we we hadn't we we didn't understand the technology at first, right. and so now that now that we're able to, I think this will this will be good for the future. We'll be able to yeah, build this in the this. future. And it's good to it's good to see faces, right? And I, and I'm praying that as we go, we'll start to see more faces populate my screen. And you know, we're going to do this. We're going to get the word out. But I do believe that right now we are safe. We're at home. And so we're going to do the best we can Amen. to be at home as much as possible. Amen. So spread the word. Let people know they can interact face to face, ask questions and all that kind of stuff. We're going to have a good time. It's going to be good. Amen. Amen. Well, everyone, I'm going to take well. it because I have a hungry big old dog outside. So I need to go and <laughs> all right. break, break and down, the, down the wall until we see each other again. Yeah. Amen. Yes. You. Yes. 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 Hope you all. All right. Good, Good night. night. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night. All the way. All right. All the way. Amen. Wait a minute. Amen, Latoya. Okay. Right. Come on, children. Come on, children. Food's coming. <laughs> Food's coming. I'm bye. Bye. Right. Right. Tinker, we're gonna rock it. Ministry Suzanne, yeah, I, I it's it's partly my fault. Um, I knew that we could do Zoom. I just I, you know, I'm one of those creatures of habit, and Facebook Live is not as effective as Zoom is, so I'm glad that we can do this. Sister Victoria, God bless you, good to see you. Oh, I see your name on it. Um, yeah, so Sister Christy logged on. Hey, Sister Christy, um, we love you all. Uh, the message, uh, or the, the Bible study is, um, <laughs> Kayla, Mr. Barrett said, hey, Nisi Poo. Uh, <laughs> The uh, Bible study is also on Facebook Live, so you can rewind and check it out. And then it'll be, um, they're going to have it uploaded to our app with, before nine o'clock. So it'll all be there. Um, we had a great discussion tonight on controlling our tongues and, and uh, the things that we say. So um, please uh, check it out. Good night, Elder Barry. And um, good night, Mother Mary. Thank you. We love you. We love you. Whoa. You did that already? Okay. All right. I need to get, I need to get with you. Yeah, you want to show? You can show them on your phone. No. All right. Before we go, Kayla wants to show you that she's customizing her Nikes. Go ahead. Oh God. Can't see it. Let me see. So now I got to give her a pair of my Air Force Ones so she can, and she does it with erasable markers so I can change what my outfits to. It's pretty cool. That's nice. Oh wow, that's cool, Kayla. Thank you. She's got it. She's got it. Love you all the bear. God bless you, Minister, uh, Minister Barry. God bless you, man. Listen, we will see you all tomorrow night. And uh, yes, everyone have a good night. We love you. Thank you, Bishop. God bless you. Amen. Signing off. Is that enough? Mm -hmm. All right. You ready to eat?